Have we talked about Homo na Lady? Before? No. We need to talk about Homo na Lady. Okay. Uh, Jamie, I brought some some slides in that. Um, I brought some some things I want to show you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna I, get a cigar. Yeah, go These for it. Little tiny ones suck. This will be a fun a fun adventure. Okay. Do you see where it is? It's at the like number yeah, yeah. sixteen there. Yeah. Homo na lady. Homo na lady. That's a cute name. It sounds like a, f a song, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> like it have a good beat to it. <laughs> um, what what year is Homo na lady? There, there it is. So. It was discovered by, by Lee in South Africa in the cradle of humankind. And this goes back, uh, well, he, this, the discovery is in 2013. The, they think that th this could be anywhere from 250 to 300,000, 335,000 years old. Um, that's what I wanted to show you. Um, this, is, this is where it was discovered. So you see the rising star cave system there in South Africa. Um, it was found in this, in this cavernous underground labyrinth of networks. Uh, where uh, Lee found uh, a number of different bodies that had been uh, apparently left there by this species, Homo naledi. Um, and the reason that's interesting is because, again, hu Homo sapiens, to our knowledge, are the only species to have ever intentionally buried their dead. So you see things like, uh, you see grief and mourning practices in the animal. You talked about the animal world. Like when they, when they just die, they're, they're left to rot typically. Although you see, you see mourning practices in, in cetaceans and you see it in elephants and maybe chimpanzees, but no one buries their dead. So that was the big bright line uh, that no species had ever crossed, seemingly aside from Homo sapiens. Although there's also evidence for, uh, for Neanderthal burial which is, goes back a, a potentially a very long time, like over 400,000 years. There's a site in Spain called Cima de los Huesos. Um, but Neanderthal is very close to us as well. You know, we have Neanderthal DNA, like in our own genetic makeup. They're kind of cousins. Uh, so that, that wasn't really too shocking, the fact that there could be Neanderthal burial. But the fact that something that looks like that and is potentially, um, you know, at least 300,000 years ago, but morphologically, it, it's archaic. Kind of like we're talking about erectus, mm -hmm. like it's it's really archaic looking homo na lady. It's yeah. it's short. It's about four eight to five two. It's slender and skinny, um, but it, there are features on it that look again like archaic. Like it could be at least a million years old, for example, or or, or longer. Mm. So it's strange that a being that archaic finds its way into this into this cave system and and deliberately deposits the dead. So that was like a very controversial idea. It was so controversial that like Lee didn't know what the what the bones were doing there because uh, it just didn't make sense. And by the way, like it's it's become the richest site for hominid discovery on on the continent and maybe maybe anywhere because of because of the profusion of bones. They they found like 1500 different bones. I think it's close to 2000 now, which is really really strange in paleoanthropology. So Lee was digging another site called Gladys Vale, not too far from this, for years, years. And typically what you find are animals. You find tens or hundreds of thousands of animal bone fragments and a very small percentage of, of hominids. So for example, at that site in Gladys Vale, he found a tooth and a pinky bone over the course of like many, many years, mm. which is not unusual. He comes to this rising star cave system and all of a sudden there's 1,500 bone fragments they're able to assemble what they think is like f 15 different individuals. So mm. 15 individual specific homo naledi are being deposited in that dinaledi chamber, and they don't know why. Uh, and so they begin to, to look more into it. I want to show you how, how difficult it is to get in there, by the way, okay. and why it was so difficult to, to believe at first. If you look at the, the cave chamber there, um, it was just up, uh, up there before. It's um, on the next one, maybe. Yeah, it's, re it's really hard to access that. You can see... Um, so you enter at the top there, and mm -hmm. if this is what Homo naledi was doing potentially 300,000 years ago. They found this cave system. They would descend there on the left, go down into what's called Superman's Crawl, which is just 10 inches high. So they had to go on their bellies, potentially. And so they think they dragged the bodies through that they Superman's Crawl? They dragged the claw? dead bodies. That through Superman's the... Crawl is only 10 inches high, and you could drag a body they, through that? It's, it, gets, it gets worse. So they not only drug it through that crawl there, they went up Dragon's Back, as you can see there, and then down what's called the chute. You see the, arrow, the yellow arrow yeah. at the chute? So the chute goes from the top of Dragon's Back into the Dinaledi Chamber. The chute is like seven or eight inches wide, seven or eight inches, and it goes down like 40 feet from the top of Dragon's Back to dinner lady and inside dinner lady is where they found f at least 15 bodies how did they get a body through seven inches 
uh, it, I mean, we we can go there too. Like it's a, really? so, so Lee um, avoided it for many years. He was able to actually make it down himself. There's a great document. You got to see the documentary. It's on Netflix. It's called Cave of Bones. If you look up look up unknown mm. unknown colon Cave of Bones, you'll find uh, an awesome documentary that that charts the discovery and what they call the underground astronauts who managed to, to get their way through. Superman's crawl and dragon's back and actually man managed to get into the dinner lady chamber. It's like, it's, it's, it's so captivating how they discovered, uh, and then root through the, the, these bones. And so, okay, there's a bunch of bones in there. It, right. It's, it's so strange that it doesn't make sense at first. So the, like the, the working hypotheses are that it was some kind of accident or it was animal predation. Okay. Animals killed these homo lady and, and animals drug them through that 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 mm -hmm. chamber complex uh, into dinner lady that that was one or maybe like maybe there was a flash flood or maybe you know this, something happened or like it wasn't like an excursion party gone gone bad a bunch of people spelunking and they got trapped in there but it turns out that, that that's that's not the case it's not only not the case it seems like they were intentionally buried in these holes and so they found pits which looked like graves and again against all expectations because only sapiens and maybe neanderthal does this this archaic be being is deliberately disposing of their dead in ritual fashion inside this chamber, which is super difficult to access in the first place. It would take it would take you like at least thirty or forty minutes to, to make your way from the how, surface. How there. would I even get in something that's seven inches wide? Uh, you can. <laughs> you have to see the, the the footage for how to do it. You, you you can make your way through it. I mean, there's it gets wider at parts, but at, at very like uh, at very uh, there there's there's sections where it's really really tight and like like Lee gets stuck at some point. And so the people who went down are really, really thin, thin people mm. who, who can navigate. And like professional spelunkers, for example, it was that dangerous to, to access. It can and be done. And if there's any earthquake activity at all, you're fucked. Yeah. It's something else to think about. You just have to imagine, like, what would motivate them to take this journey in the first place? That's, that's why I mention it, because it's, it's not just the first discovery of the deliberate burial of the dead by a species that's not us. They go to great lengths to do this yeah. because they too were thinking about these cycles of life and death, right? Uh, and so if it wasn't an accident and it wasn't flash flooding and it wasn't animal predation and this was deliberate burial ritual, like why would they do that? 